Betty. I'm very happy to be here this afternoon. I got just a little tired last night, but I feel fine today. Uh, I had a funny sort of a convention, a religious convention, and some of the stuff was I feel fine because I was very for the people. And it's other reason, as rightly said, it is not uh, uh, just uh, something other that, uh, well, a God is just done to one individual person or something. I'm just a, a little bit of part of it. But it was given to me in order that it could be demonstrated before the church that everybody might catch the vision of the supernatural part that God lives and reigns in this church today. And it's here to bless us all. And the blessings I trust that one of the finest groups of ministers I've met, I believe, is these brothers here that have got to shake their hands about once, but they're certainly fine brothers. And I'm so glad to know that when we leave here, we leave these converts and so forth in hands of men like that, that love God. May God richly bless them. May there be an old-fashioned revival start from this figure in God through the country, ready for the coming of the Lord. For I truly believe it's drawing close at hand. I do not wish you to said I was a fanatic and said when Jesus is coming right now. I, I do not know that. No one knows when Jesus is coming. Not even the angels, just the Father is all who knows. But he said when we see these signs begin to come to pass, then get ready for the time was at hand. And we know we're right there at the time. Now, in a, a day like this, the brethren give it to me, and usually on Saturday nights or something like that, I try to put in as much time as possible. The gift has such an effect. So it just pulls the life out of me. And sometimes I get to I don't even know where I'm standing at. It's just such an anointing. You just get to a place. <clears throat> and many times, there's other reasons why they take me. I, I, we're just all God's children, aren't we? Just home folks. I believe you love me. I love you with all my heart. And many times that way, I hold myself on the gift. Now, it's not around me. I'll go to heaven been praying. I got up had just a little bite of breakfast, and I won't eat any more public lecture services, so forth. I have to keep empty. If you, if you keep your stomach empty, the blood is at your brain, and you be ready. See, if you're all full, when you're at the power of fasting, when you're, when you're full, the blood goes into your stomach to digest your food, you see. And then when you're empty, it's in your, in your brain, so you can be just because them two spirits is so close to deceive the very elect, if possible. And many, many times you hear it cry. I've heard people shout. As I told you, I hope I, God has let me find favor with you that you believe me. I've heard people shout when it wasn't God. I've heard people cry when it wasn't God. And there's sympathy sometimes. The devil wants to be petted. It takes a real sheep razor to know the difference between a blade of a goat and a lamb. They're so close together, you see. And so therefore, on this platform, you must be very careful. It's just one thing all Satan wants to, wants to throw out before the public. So therefore, I have to be fasty, prayerful, every minute on the guard, watching for something. And now, on a service like this, it just feels like you just, oh, we call it a street expression, just let down your collar and come in and talk. And, and you don't have to be looking at that. You just go to talk on the Word. And then sometimes when it gets in that subconscious condition on a platform, it goes to calling people critics and things in the meeting and sets in the meeting. And that causes a disturbance. Sometimes they get angry and up around about it. And I just try to hold it just exactly to one thing that's on healing and what I'm representing here on divine healing and so forth. Now, if the patient's up here and something in the patient, why, it's called out. But Sometimes out in the audience, it just pulls right out the critics and so forth sitting there, hurt feelings, a discerning spirits and awful. And sometimes you have to speak very sharply, and you don't speak yourself, it speaks, you see. And so it's a great day that we're coming into. Now, long ago, I was talking to someone that all the days of evangelism will be after this church is done gone, and there'll be another age raised up. Don't you believe that? Now is the day. You get ready now. 
You're probably living one of the best days that you'll ever see. That's right. You take heed today to the Word of God. The Holy Spirit's been in the world for evangelism for 1,900 years and ever. This is the day of evangelism, to move out and get the church in order. God's showing these signs in the order, God. Supernatural. Now, I'm, as I told you a while ago, I'm just a long way from being a preacher. I, I usually a little, I don't believe in joking at the platform. This is no place to joke. This is sacred. This is a platform thing. And uh, uh, we mustn't do that. This is God's town. God's place. So we must be real sincere. Now, as a minister, I remember when I first got my papers, ordination papers at the Missionary Baptist Church, I thought I was a, a preacher. <laughs> I just love to tell everybody I was a preacher. And it uh, kind of reminds me, one time I was, my father was, my mother is from Oklahoma and Texas, and she was born in the state of Kentucky, and my grandfather went west. My mother's mother come off the Oklahoma reservation. She's full blood Cherokee Indian. And uh, my father's Irish. And my mother on the other side, but her father was Irish. And so they forgive us for that. <laughs> I say that so that we, we know that God, no matter what we are, who we are, God will forgive us. That's right. For our sins and such cases. My father was a writer. And he went west breaking horses and he met my mother and they were married. I was born when my mother was 15 years old and my father was 18, just children. And so I used to want to be like my dad. Next Sunday afternoon, the Lord willing, if we get to stay over for next Sunday, I wish to tell my life story next Sunday afternoon from the platform here and how I love my daddy and how I wanted to do things like dad did. And he used to like to ride, so I said, I want to be a rider also when I got to be a man. I used to take our old plow horse, and of the afternoon when the work was over, and I'd uh, put some cuckleburrs under the saddle and pull it down, you know, real good tight, and get down behind the barn where the watering trough was, and get on the old horse, and the poor old thing was retired. He took he put buff, so he'd just stand ball, you know, and just cut his feet up and down. And I'd take off my straw hat and hit him like that. I was, thought I was a real rider, so one day, when I got to be about 18 years old, I went out west. I landed in Arizona. I thought I wanted to be a rider. I went out to the grill to find out if I could get a job riding in the rodeo. And I climbed up with a pair of Levi's on on the grill fence where they brought a horse out and he had to come out through the stalls to catch his hand. I seen a fellow jump on the horse there and he ah, my, sure didn't act like my old sow horse. He showed that fellow mine. He had a handful of mane in his hand. And the fellow coming by a collar came by and said, I'll give any man $50 to a sale in my head. He kept them on by all those riders. He said he would come right straight to me. He said, are you a rider? I said, no. <laughs> I, I was very scared because I wasn't a rider. That just reminded me when I was first got ordained as a Baptist preacher, I'd carry my Bible under my arm, you know, and go down the street, and I'd, and I'd say, are you a preacher? Yes, sir. See? And one day I was at St. Louis, Missouri. I went into a tent meeting. There was a minister there by the name of Reverend Darden. He was a Pentecost preacher. And he got to preaching. My! He would preach till his breath would leave him. He'd turn red in the face, and his knees would go together, and he'd go plumb down to the floor and come back catch his breath and you hear him about two squares, still preaching. Some of them said, are you a preacher? I said, no, sir. <laughs> I wasn't no preacher. I was a preacher all right till I met him. So when I come around with these Pentecost preachers, I say, I'm no preacher. <laughs> My old slow Baptist ways don't think of it that fast. And so, so I just have to do the best I can, but I do love the Word of God. Lord, it's really good, and it's good to our hearts. And this afternoon, my brother is fixing to go away to the army. His city, they called him last night. He has to leave right away to return in the, the service. And uh, here not long ago, I preached a little subject on the resurrection of Lazarus. I don't know where anybody here is preach from it or not in other places. If you have, raise your hand. The resurrection of Lazarus, three or four. And um, he asked me, that was one of his favorite subjects. And he asked me if I could get on it some way for this afternoon. And I promised him I would. He'll bear with me just a little bit. 
our Heavenly Father. Now we've come together this afternoon for one purpose, to speak of Thee and to love Thee, and we all love You. And we've come facing this today, knowing that today may be the someone may seal their eternal destination from this service today, the attitude towards the Word. We realize that no one can come in a service and return and be the same person. We go out, if we reject, we go out worse than we were when we come in. And if we accept, we go out better than we were. For the Word cannot return void. It accomplished that which it is purpose God. And now, Father, realizing that maybe many unsaved are here today, I'm to speak before them uh, this word. I pray, God, that you'll take the word by the Holy Spirit and may it give out to each one. May everyone be blessed, Father. Keep us humble. We realize that, that we are nothing in this earth, and we may not live to see the sunset this afternoon. We may go out to meet God before that time. And now, Father, bless thy servants this afternoon. And help me as I minister the word of grace to the people. For I ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> Could we do without Jesus? We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jesus. Now, friends, I'm just a little funny about standing up and speaking before people because I haven't got any education. So now, uh, don't judge me by my my education, but for what I need, mean, from my heart, if you will. Um, I wish to read this portion of Scripture found in St. John's 11th chapter, if you would like to read just a, a little with me, and I'll pray with me, if you will, for uh, just a short time, and I'll try to close, and not keep you too long, so you can be here for the evening service. The 11th chapter of St. John, let's begin about the 20th verse of the 11th chapter. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if I had been here, my brother had not died. I love that, don't you? Let's listen to this reading of the word. Let me read that 21st verse again. Listen. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask God, God will give it to you. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. That is the attitude of approach. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Do those Jews believe in the general resurrection? Listen to the 25th verse. Notice, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which is come into the world. May God add his blessings to his word. Now, let everyone just forget about the work you have to do tomorrow, what you've done last week, and let's think of Jesus just now. And get this story kind of in our mind of, of him and seeing him at this time. This was during the time of his beginning of his ministry. His ministry had gotten great. Uh, they called him so much that he couldn't go to different he had to go to different parts of the country, I mean, to minister to those who were in need. And it had a very hard time. Isn't it strange that God takes those things of low estate and brings them up? When he was born, he was born with a black name to begin with, black mark on his name. He was supposing to, to have been a legitimate child, or, or illegitimate child, born by Joseph being his father before he and Mary was married. Someone not long ago told me, he said, Brother Branham, don't you believe that that was just a little bit of a slip-up like we have in all days? And I said, no, sir. 
I believe that he was truly the Son of God. He was God's Son. And he said, it's against all scientific research, Brother Brown. He was a scientist. He said, it's against all scientific research for anything like that to happen. And he said, first place, your thought of God is just psychology. He said, there is no such a thing. He said, it's good for that people believe in that. I said, no, I, I differ with you, my friend. No, I said, I know there he is. He said, now, don't you think that if Joseph was really the father and he was just a uh, good man, a good teacher, and a smart man, and they just made a religion around him? I said, no, sir. I believe that he was the virtuous born son of God. And I said, I believe it with all my heart. He said, well, it could not have been born without he had an earthly father. So now, corn, it has to have a poem. All things have to be pulled between natural, between male and female, and it's utterly impossible for any child to be born without a direct uh, sexual affair of a male and female. And he said it has to have a earthly father and mother. I said, brother, I, or friend, I couldn't call him my brother, but I said, friend, look, that's I'm different with you. I said, now, you were just telling me a while ago according to some of the Darwin's ethics or something, that the first man, when he came here, it was a germ uh, come on the earth, it was moon and star, again, it was a tadpole and so forth. I said, I want to ask you something. If you will credit him of having an earthly mother, but you can't believe he come here without having an earthly father, he said, that's exactly right. It's against all scientific research. I said, then, if you are credit him of having an earthly mother and can't believe that God was his father, and you say that he had to have a both earthly father and mother, or he could not have been here, so that's right. I said, how did the first man get here without father or mother then? Let it be what he wants to be, see? Let him be, if he was a monkey or a tadpole or whatever he was, who was his father and mother? There you are. You have to bring it back to he, God the Creator. And God the Creator created a blood cell in the womb of Mary, come from the Father, which is God by virgin birth, and that is the Son of God, who we love and cherish today, who died and gave his blood at Calvary, that we might have remission of our sins and healing of our bodies. That's my faith in the gospel of Christ. Now, I believe it with all my heart. Uh, if today, if we should have an altar call and and uh, in this city today, and 10,000 people would come to Christ, and all 10,000 would die tomorrow, and 50 years from the day I would return back, and they would come back, and I would be laying here dying, and they'd say, oh, that's fake, that's fake, Jesus is the Christ. No, sir, we done been there and come back, and we know that it isn't the Christ. And I was dying, I said, let me go in Jesus, for I believe him, no matter what, that's if I prayed for 10,000 people and every one of them died in an hour after I prayed for them, I'd still die. I'd say, I believe in divine healing, for it's the Word of God, and I know it's the truth. And that's right. Them theories don't change God's Word, no, sir. God's Word is eternally true, and it's right, and our faith is based on that. And I, I'm not saved today because I got out the altar and cried. It's I'm saved because the Word of God tells me I'm saved. Satan can whip me around anywhere on how you feel, but I believe it because God said so, and I accept him upon the basis of his word. That's how I was saved. I believed it and confessed it, and then it works the result. But the first thing, I'm saved because God's word teaches I'm saved. That's how you're saved if you're saved. Satan can whip you on your ideas and things, but he can't go around the word of God. Jesus said, it is written, and that's settled it with all. It is written in the scriptures. Now when he was there... He was born, as I said, in the world, coming here with a black mark on his knee. How that God so marvelously brought him here. Just before his coming, the age had got just about like it has come to recently, and to a backslidden condition. Israel had been brought into captivity by the Romans, and there they had been taken away, and the priests had got to a place and got away from the supernatural part of God been teaching just upon a uh, doctrine of their own uh, theories of what they taught. As Jesus said, you teach for commandments the word of man making the word of God of non effect. And that's about the kind of a time that he was born. But God has always had a witness here on earth for him. Now, notice, then during those times just before his, his birth, before God does anything here on earth, 
I want you to catch this close. Before God does anything on earth, He always sends a witness from heaven to declare it. Now, before Jesus was born, why, God sent a witness of this. Signs and wonders begin to appear of His coming, just as it's appearing today by witnesses of His second coming again. See? Signs and wonders. This is a day that there's never been an age through all the church ages that's ever produced what this age is producing right now. For it's the coming of the Lord drawing near. Don't you believe it? Drawing nigh, rather. And we're nearing the time of the close of this world's history when Jesus shall come. Notice, signs begin to appear. There was a man by the name of Zachariah and his wife, Elizabeth, righteous, holy people, keeping the commandments of God, walking in all the statues and artists of God, blameless. That's the kind of a home we need today. Don't you believe it? And instead of that, in the church today, we have everything else. But holiness and righteousness. But they were righteous people, godly people, walking in the commandments of the Lord, keeping all the artists blameless. That life was a priest at the temple, and his office was to burn incense while prayer was being made. And one day, while he was in the temple burning incense, Gabriel, an angel from God, came down and stood for the altar of incense and said, Zachariah, hear not. Your prayers is heard. Oh, I love that. His, his wife was there. She hadn't had any children. She's past the age of bearing. But he lived right before God and believed on God. And all of his great, dark, long hours of weary, finally the angel comes and said, God has heard your prayer. Now, if you want God to hear your prayer, send an angel to your home. Live right. Do right. Treat everybody right. Be right before God. And God will grant that to you. Now, I said, now notice, sometimes in that day like it is now, when our prayers are a little bit lingered, we become dull, sense-bound. So Zechariah doubted that that could be so. He didn't believe it. And notice, after he had plenty of examples, now Sarah and Abraham, how old they were when Isaac was born, Hannah came to the temple, passed the age of Aaron, went to the temple that day to serve God. Probably the women all left the shallow, maybe to see what kind of hats one another wore. But not Hannah. She went up with something in her heart. She wanted to talk to God. And she prayed in such deep sincerity till the priest misunderstood her. That's the day sometimes we're called fanatics because we pray and cry out to God. We're, just, we're not fanatics. Misunderstood. That's all. And then when he thought she was drunk, they did the same thing on Pentecost. They do the same thing today. She said she was not drunk, but she was praying God take away her reproach. He blessed her. And as soon as she received the blessing from the priest, notice, didn't wait now. God could have put the baby in her arms right then. But she went home happy, knowing that in due season God would bring it to pass. That's the kind of people we need today. Taking God at his word. And he has that example and many others. But being a priest, instead of the word, and still doubted how his wife, as old as she was, could have a baby after that age by him. Notice. But the angel of God will perform his word. He'll bring his word to pass regardless when season comes. Harvest is right. God is going to send his word and perform his thing. Today, listen, I believe that God is going to call a people out of the Gentiles for his name. And this great letter would move the gear of a revival sweeping a nation. And if the holiness people don't want it, he'll raise it up out of something else. That's right. It's got to be, it's got to come. He's able these stones to rise children under Abraham. What's the matter? We've let down the bar. Compromising. No old minister used to think we let down the bar. We compromise with sin. We let out the bar as the sheep got out. How did the goats get in? You let out the bar. That's what it is. Let out on the word. We're getting stiff and starchy. Pray to come back to the old-fashioned gospel. That's right. To the old child 
salvation and make you clean up, fix up. That's right. Make right and come before God. That's what's the matter with the church today. We need a revival. We don't need a new seminary. We don't need new preachers. We don't need new church buildings. We need a revival in what we got. That's what it is. Stirring up. Amen. All right, I'm not amen in myself, but amen means so be it. And I believe it with all my heart. That's what the world needs today is an old-fashioned, God-sent, God-bruised, sin-killing religion. Oh, St. Paul's revival and the final Holy Ghost back into the church again. That might be pretty strong for a Baptist, but that's right. True. I'm a Pentecostal Baptist. I got the Holy Ghost since I've been a Baptist. That's right. No, no. Cleans up, sets aside. Makes a different person, new creature in Christ Jesus. All right. Here's what we need. Then he doubted it could be so, but God's going to confirm his word. Don't you worry. God gave all these stones to rise, should have Abraham said John. Watch. Then in all of that, what's taking place? God was sure to bring it to pass because it was the season, at the time. His words ever caused to fit the same place when that prophetic wheel begin to roll together. It's got to happen. And there is coming a time when there's right now in the near future that when great judgment's going to be upon these nations that forget God. When you put up with what I've seen the last few days and see around this country under the name of religion and live in the way people's living, no wonder communistic things break out of things the way they are. That's the Bible teaches, that's right. We're letting down, compromising. But God's going to have a remnant of the people, a good force, church of God's follow angel. Amen. I believe it. With all my heart. Notice, then God was going to bring it to pass. And he said, because of Gabriel the angel said, because you have doubted my word, I'm Gabriel. Stands in the presence of God. Without it, glory will be done till the day that they be born. Hallelujah. I believe God. God. Say the line. He. God's determined. When he speaks his word. He can't lie. God, the hour. We're stuck by many times going to places. He's going, oh, I don't believe in that. I'll leave a ticket to his mouth. Don't make that difference. What? God's going to show forth his power and the stretching forth the hand of his son, Christ Jesus. The heal the sick and the bring the nine spiritual gifts back to the church. Get yeah, a church ready to be raptured in some of these hours. Cause is doubt in me now. You'll be done, but the things will be something went on through his life. And she can see if there's any danger when the high impossible it looks is going to happen. That's right. And she can see even hit herself for six months. Six months later, things are happening around. Bethlehem and Judea and around in Palestine now. Notice what's happening again now, too. I a whole lot of God. Get ready. Wake up. Get your conscience out here. Get your soul out here with God. Get away from that sense bound existence. Thinking what you just look at this, that, day over day. Lift up your head. Redemption is drawing nigh. Get ready. Signs and wonders appearing. Critics. Infidel. That's worse and worse. We got to put up with them. But we're not looking to them, we're looking to God. This Gabriel comes down from heaven. Let's give just a little drama here. I imagine it'd be like on Monday or rush day or something. In the city of Nazareth. A little woman by the name of Mary. She starts out to the pump in the old old fashioned head. Big guys that handles on them. That's the woman on her shoulder and on her head. I can see her coming from the spring of the pump out there with well, packing water on her shoulder with her and walking along a little bridge of, of all the aristocrats, all the fine-dressed people through the country, the educated. God came down to Nazareth, the meanest city in the world. The pick out a woman that he found who was virtuous to bring his son to the earth. My little virgin. She's walking home, packing the water, 
persecuted me, thought I was probably the way they lived, then be something like it is now. She didn't get out and ride around with the rest of the crowd. She was a fanatic. But she knew where she was standing with God. Walking along with her head down, all of a sudden I can just notice a big light like swing around her. She looked, standing in that light, stood the great angel Gabriel. It excited the little virgin. It would excite you. It would excite me. It did when he appeared to the angel, whatever he was. I can hear him say, hear him say, Hail Mary, blessed art thou among women. And the little virgin stopped in the portal at the face of the angel. And she looked at him. And he said, I am for you sent for the presence of God. Told her about her, her cousin, Elizabeth was Mary's first cousin, and then told about that and said that she was going to bring a child, knowing no man. Look! Oh, my. I, I just feel good. Notice, right when those callous clergymen, Zachariah, failed to believe the angel's message, Many times there's many clergymen today, brethren, that don't believe it either. I need the resurrection of the church now. I need the pastoral gospel denying the blood, denying the power, denying the Holy Ghost, and all. But thank God there is some who does believe it. Notice. But this little woman, Zacharias, I tell you, had much pictures behind him to believe were miracles that happened on the same order. But Mary, there had never been a baby born like that. But notice, instead of fussing at the angel, like Zacharias did, she said, Behold the hands made of the Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. Oh, I love that. There it is. Take him at his word. Don't try to figure it out how it's going to be. Just take him at his word. And notice, as soon as she got his word and heard his word that she was going to have the baby, she didn't wait till she was positive. She didn't wait till she felt right. She started right out testifying about it. God, give us some more Marys down here in Cleveland. They will take God out of his word and testify about it before anything happens. Just so the word of God says so. Hey Amen. Now, maybe I'm stepping you out there. That thing's got an awful voice. Look! I don't aim to yell at you. But sometimes I get to speaking when you feel a response of the Holy Spirit coming back, knowing there's anchoring somewhere. It's hard to hold quiet. That's right. Notice. She took him at his word. God said she's going to have a baby. Told it by an angel. That was good enough for her. Away she went testifying. Telling people she was going to have the baby before there was any sign of anything. She had the word of God. That's good enough. That's good enough for me this afternoon. If he's Jehovah Rapha, the healer, if he promised to heal me, I'll take him at his word. If he promised who the Holy Ghost was to me, I'll stay there until it comes. That's all. Right. He promised it. Stay with it. Just take him at his word and stay right there. That's the only way to do it. All right. I can see her. She's so happy she won't tell somebody else about it. Somebody else, when people get saved today, they think, well, maybe I better keep still. My neighbor don't believe in this. Uh, you never really got saved, I don't believe. No, sir. You can't hold it. That's right. So, well, uh, I'm afraid to testify of healing. Pray the, uh, the, the, the doctor won't like it. Brother, if you got healing, you'll testify about it. Don't hold it. Tell it. Right. Tell it out to somebody else. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and your testimony. That's how you overcome. Notice. Coffee. Now, let's follow a little farther. Let's watch Mary. The angel told her that. She said, Behold, the hands made of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word. Went around her again, happy and rejoicing. She said she's going to have a baby. She knows no man. Impossible with man, but not impossible with God, for all things are possible to them that believe. She believed God, took him at his word. When the angel met me in the room that night and said to me, Go do this, some said, Aren't you afraid that you'll make a mistake? No, sir. I can't make a mistake. Certainly not. I could, but as long as he's here, I can't make a mistake. That's right. I remember you're no longer standing up in the mountains. I love to hunt. I was way in the mountains hunting elk late night. 
All my life, that's how I learned of God, was by hunting, being out. I never went to shows, dances, never smoked drinks. I was a black sheep, sure enough. And all of them laughed at me. But I go hunting. And out there in the woods, I see a sunset and I cry. I hear the wind blowing through the leaves of trees. I wonder, oh my, what's up them trees here? How does it die in the wintertime, come back to life in the summer? How the little flower does it go away and come up again? How the winds that blow it, that little seed up and bear it in the ground and tears from the fall would bear the seed? Is that all of it? No. The ground that freeze and the seed would burst, the pulp would run out. Is that all? No. In there, there's a germ of life. Just as sure as that warm spring sun begins to shine, yet all stop. Petal, bulb, seed, pulp, everything else gone for the flower. But God's made a way for that flower to live again. Just as soon as that sun goes to shine, there's a germ of life in there somewhere that stayed to the freeze. And I'll tell you, it'll live again. And if God made a way for a flower to live again, what about a man that's made in his image? The freeze might come, but when a man's born again of the Spirit of God, there's life in there, eternal life. That will stay in his freeze. And when the Son of Righteousness rises with healing in his wings, there'll be a church to go up beneath the air. Amen. You're going to call me a holy old rainy out. I might as well have a good time anyhow. So there you are. Notice. Yes, sir, there's a life comes from God that only God alone can give. The freeze might come, it might break you this way or that way, but when that germ of life in that will stay. That's right, and God will bring it forth again in the resurrection. Oh, my. Standing up in the mountains, I was telling you, one fall, I remember, about four years ago, I go up in Colorado, I go 70 miles back for horseback, the little ranch out there where nobody goes, way up on top of the real peak, just to be alone. The old rancher and I, and he sleeps by my side at night on the snow in a, in a little camp bag, and at nighttime we live there looking at the stars. First time with him, I was talking to him about the Lord. He was unconverted. I felt a hand reaching over under my slap bag about one o'clock in the morning. The preacher, I said, yeah. That looks like him up there. Oh, and I said, oh, God bless you, brother. Let's say it right here. That's right. The deed calling to the deed has got to be a deed to respond to it. There. One day I was up in the mountain going along. It was early in October. The breezes was coming. The storms are going. The wind blew against the evergreens and storms. I got behind a tree, and I was standing like this, the wind blowing, I was waiting, the storm passed over, and the sun came out, I walked out behind a tree, and the road blew down, near, and I looked, and all the, I've been cold while the rain was blowing, the road was all over the, the evergreens, and the sun was setting down through the crevices of the rocks over there, flickering against that, made a rainbow come down through the valley, oh my, I looked at it, and I prayed my gun, and I said, oh Jehovah God! Seventy miles from civilization. I sit down old gray wolf got the highway up on the rim and they answered out the bottom the elk herd had been lost. They heard them bugling one to another. Then the deep begin to call to the deep and hear for there's something in nature that pulls out. I love that God's in his nature. Look at the sunset. Get saved once and watch how different things look when you get saved and look at God in his nature out there. I try standing looking at that. I thought, oh my, how wonderful. How would I have to go down here and not run around and around and around the tree and shake my hands if somebody would have come by? They thought I was out of an insane institution. And I screamed to the top of my voice. I said, oh God, oh God, how great you are. Why would it be that I'd ever have to go down into the valley? I remember as Peter Nam said, it's good to be here with still three tabernacles. Look at that. Oh, I heard something moving. I looked over here and there's a big old eagle. I've been He's under the brush. You want to put an eagle before me? Unless you wanted me to see you. Golly, can I see about him? Sure, maybe your darkest hour. Don't worry, Jesus will be along. Maybe your darkest hour, sister. Maybe yours, sister. Maybe yours, brother. But don't worry, Jesus will come along. He's always there just in the darkest of hours. Everybody stay there. He said, there he goes, I bet she's going out to meet him now. She just pressed right on by him. She knew in her heart if she could ever get to Jesus, she'd get the desire of her heart. That's right. There you are. She probably read the Bible with a Shunammite woman. When her baby was dead, and she knew if she could ever get to Elijah, that she would know why that baby died or get the will of God. Now, he, she knew, Shunammite woman knew, that God was in Elijah. There's where the Spirit was in the prophets. 
And that's where she must get to that earthly vessel that had the Spirit of God in it. If she could ever get to Elisha, she would get to her heart's desire. So she just stayed there. She said, I'll not leave you. <laughs> oh, I like that, don't you? I'll stay with it. <laughs> yes, sir. And went like she said, he said, well, I'll send him a handkerchief, in other words. I'll send a stick and lay on him. She said, as the Lord God lives in your story with us, I'm not going to leave you. And he stayed right there until Elisha went to the house and laid his body on that dead baby. Never prayed. Laid his head and hands over like that, but he's lips down against it like that. And the Spirit of God that was in Elisha come up on the child and brought it back to life again. Well, she knew if God was in Elisha, surely he was in his son. Hallelujah. That's right. There, she said, if I can only get to him, I'll find out the reason my brother died. So she pressed out on through that crowd of unbelievers. But she got down there to where he was. Now look, he might close down. I'm going to close just in a minute. He might. But she had a right to a brave him, doesn't he? Say, why didn't you come to my brother? Scold him. Why didn't you come to my brother? If she would have approached him, that attitude should have, that miracle would have never happened. It's your attitude of approach. How you approach anything. If you come, like on the gift here, you've got to approach the gift in the right way. You've got to approach God in the right way. You can't come through. Now, Lord, up here, I've been pretty good for I'll get some hand me down. So I told you, I want you to take me tonight and say, no, no, God don't take it like that. You come to God's provided way or you don't come at all. I'm That's true. That's true. That's the way she comes to Jesus. She came to him, and she ran and fell down at his feet. Look at her now. Let's look at the scene. I hear her say, Lord, giving him his right title. That's what he was. Lord, if thou would have been here, my brother would not have died. Oh, her heart was broken. She knew her brother was gone. She's turned out of her church now. What did she have left? Just her and Mary to struggle together. She said, Lord, if thou would have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, Lord, oh my, whatever you ask God, God will give it to thee. Oh, isn't that wonderful? My brother's dead. He stinketh. He's in the grave four days. His skin worms are crawling through him. But even now, Lord, whatever you ask God, God will give it to you. Oh, look, sister, it may be a dark hour for you, but even now, Lord, Whatever you ask, God, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father to intercede for you. Even now, Lord, whatever you ask, God, God will do it. Say, well, i got a cancer, brother Ben. The doctor says I'm going to die. I can't make it. But even now, Lord, whatever you ask. Oh, brother Ben, I've had prayer cards, but I just couldn't. But even now, Lord, whatever you ask, God, God will do it. Oh, right now, even now, at this minute, God can take our cancer away from the people here. He can heal every crippled person. He can make the way more. What? Even now, Lord. Whatever you ask, God, God will do it. God can make the eyes of this blind man break forth. He can heal cross eyes of that cross eyed girl thing here. He can make this woman here bound with ease to help and strength. Why? Even now, Lord. Even now, Lord, whatever you ask, God, God will give it to you. That went to the heart of Christ. I can hear him raise, or see him raise, and say, Thy brother shall rise again. She said, Yea, Lord, he'll raise again at the last day, for he was a good boy. Did he believe in that general resurrection at the last day? He said, She said, Yeah, Lord, he, he'll raise at the last day. Look at him. The Bible said there's no beauty we should design. Little old skinny looking fellow, probably skinny and bony, but I see him pull his little stuff together. said, I am the resurrection in life. Oh, my. I still believe he's the resurrection life. I am the resurrection life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whoso believeth and believeth in me shall never die. Leave us out of this. She said, Yo, Lord, look. Oh, there's the gift of God before it. There's everything that she has need of. She's approaching it right. The wheels are coming together. She regarded him as Lord and title. That's what he was. Oh, in the Son of God, even now, Lord, I believe whatever you ask God, God will do it. See? And I believe that thou art the Son of God, which has gone into the world. Oh, my. Something has to happen. When faith like that is met at the right spot, something has to happen. I know that by experience. She said, I believe what you said is the truth. I believe that you're the Son of God that was to come into the world. Where have you been? Oh, my. Where have you been? Here they go. A woman said to me not long ago, said, Brother Graham, he was a good man, but he wasn't divine. He was just like an ordinary man. I said, oh, yes, he was divine. 
He was defiant. Say, he was a good man, but he wasn't defiant. I said, yes, he was. I'll tell you what. She said, here's the reason he wasn't. So when he went down to the grave of Lazarus, it proved that he wasn't divine because he went to crime. And that showed that he was a man. The Bible said Jesus wept. I said, look at him. He might have been a man when he was weak. And the man said, Lazarus, come forth. And a man if he turned back, he'd have been dead four days. The of Christ working down the world himself. He was more than a man. He was a God-man. He was God of all men. He was perfect out of himself here in his son. God was himself in him. Was God dwelling? Look at him. He was a man, too. When he was crying, he was a man. But when he raised the dead, he was God. When he came down off the mountain that night when he was hungry, something, or when he took five biscuits and fed five thousand, he was God speaking out of his son. God was in his son. Don't you believe that? Yes, sir. Oh, he was a man when he was in that prayer meeting and all the first had gone out of him. He was laying on the back of that ship that night and it floated around right like a bottle stopper on a mighty sea. Ten thousand devils of the world. But please be still and the way stop. That was a man. That was God speaking. Oh, no. That was God speaking out of his son. He was a God. He cried for mercy like a man at the cross. He did that. But when he rose up on Easter morning, he proved, hallelujah, what he was. Yes, indeed. He proved what he was. When he stood the grave as a mere man, and called a man had been dead four days, thinking in the grave, look at him. He said, take ye away the stone. I believe if he'd have spoken the stone, ever to vanish. Don't you believe so? Look like if he'd have been a man talking them to the old women. So he took the stone himself away. But you've got something to do yourself. That's right. Take ye away the stone. Him as a man. Do well with them. Pull the stone away. There I can see him. Not much to look at with your eyes. The Bible said no beauty you should design. I see him standing there. Raised back his head. The Father, I thank thee thou hearest thee always. But for thee to stand by, I said it. Lazarus, come forth. Ah, and a man that had been dead and in the grave, his body mortified, rotten and plain words, laying in the grave, and his soul was four days' journey somewhere out in space. I don't know who it was, neither did he when he returned back that soul that man corrupt and do it faster and the soul returned back into a man who had been dead for four days and he stood on his feet and lived again. Believe us out of this. I believe the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Believe us thou this. I believe he's the one that stopped the mouth of lies. But Daniel, believe us thou this. I believe he's the one that's coming some of these days in great power. Believe us thou this. I believe his power is here this afternoon to heal every sick person in this building. Believe us thou this. I believe he'll give every person a Holy Ghost of worship right now. Hallelujah. Believe us thou this. I believe he's here wanting to heal this woman. That baby, this woman, all of you believe us out this. I believe if we stand to our foot out this. That stand and accept him man. All of you got it. Lord Jesus, believe that you're here. Lord, send the Holy Ghost and power upon these people. He over the sick person in the building goes out, Father. Grand Lord, it's your goodness and blessings be manifested unto this people.